here with co-host Kim, who has her other hat on today. She's author and designer of crochet dolls. Hi, Shay. Hi, Kim. And we're going to talk about, tell us first what kind of doll it is. It comes from Japan. The style is from Japan, and the Japanese word is amigurumi, which means knitted and crocheted doll. Um, and there's a very high value in Japan placed on cuteness. So the goal is to create the cutest doll you possibly can. And uh, the Japanese style dolls are often very, very small. You use a lightweight yarn and a small hook, and sometimes, you know, they're only like four or six inches high. I decided, enough with that. Let's go right. big. So I used a super chunky yarn to make uh -huh. these dolls that are almost a foot tall. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the basics for how to make these dolls and, uh, and their techniques that can be applied to any kind of doll you might want to make. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to be very specific to this pattern. But to start out, you always want to use a hook smaller than the size you would generally use. One or two sizes smaller? Or? Sure. Whatever's comfortable. And your hands might hurt because you're creating okay. a very stiff fabric. And I can show you On here. On purpose. On purpose so that when you stuff the dolls, the stuffing doesn't pop through. So you're creating something very firm. And as you can see, this doesn't, this stands up all on its own. Right. It's almost a dish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the techniques we use, since it's all worked in single crochet in the round, mm -hmm. are very similar to what you would use mm -hmm. to make a hat. Mm -hmm. So to start off with, uh, we start. So you're, stop, you're starting at the top of the doll. Yes, you start at okay. the top and you work down. And unlike a hat, where you often have a little bit of a hole at the mm -hmm. top of the hat where mm -hmm. you started with your initial ring, you don't want that in these dolls because of the stuffing. So there's a way that I like to use, a technique I like to use that I like to refer to as the double ring to start off with, which is different from usually you chain five or six stitches and then right. you join that chain in a ring and then you begin crocheting. In this case, what I'm going to do is just wrap the tail of my yarn. We refer to you know the yarn tail mm -hmm. here where it's cut, and the working yarn is attached to the ball. I'm going to wrap the tail of yarn around my finger twice. This is in normally you do a slip knot, correct? Normally you would do a slip knot okay. and begin with some chains. This is replacing the slip. This knot. is replacing the slip knot. That's okay. right. So I'm going to grab this double ring here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to gather up my working yarn, mm -hmm. and I'm going to insert my hook right into the center of that ring yarn over and, and pull, pull up it. a loop. Mm -hmm. So now this is my ring right here. Mm -hmm. And what this is going to allow me to do, then I'm going to chain one here, but I'm going to interrupt mm -hmm. myself for a sec here, and start making my single crochets in the Through center. that double loop. That's right, using yes. this double loop as a ring. Mm -hmm. And what this is going to allow me to do is that when I'm done with the first round of stitches, I'm going to be able to pull on the yarn tail, and that's going to tighten up this ring very, very securely. Now this is a bit of a bulky start, so it might be an awkward way to begin a hat. Okay, and does it matter how many stitches, or are you doing a pattern, or are you just filling your ring? Right now I'm just filling my ring. Okay. Um, a pattern usually will, will call for six or eight stitches okay. in your beginning ring. Okay, now you've got to pull it tight. Right, so now I'm, I'm done here. I pulled up this loop just so it won't okay. come out. Here's my yarn tail. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to grab very firmly the mm -hmm. stitches here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to Pull, really and, it can and feel that quite is making awkward. the top of the. Listen. That's making this hole yes. close up, and you want to pull really hard because mm -hmm. both of those loops are going to have to come through. And as you can see here, there's, there's no, no hole. hole. How great! <laughs> now, now you've got this. Would be the top. This would be the head. So and another way, if you if you look at the dolls here, there you can see very. They might have arms, uh -huh. they might not have arms, they might have a tail or legs or whatever, uh -huh. but the main parts of the doll are the head and the body. Okay. So regardless, if you're off to design your own doll, something that you want to make sure of is that there are the same number of stitches in the head, in the, at the bottom of the head and the top oh, of oh, the body for the so neck. So they go together, right? That's right. You <laughs> okay. very rarely stitch them all in one piece because okay. if you did, then you'd have to stuff them while you still had live stitches and then yeah. it can be quite awkward to close it up. So I always crochet my head separately mm -hmm. from my body, and here I just made a little miniature version of Doug the Blue Doll. So you can see that because they have the same number of stitches, they meet up at the neck right here, and I've left myself a very long tail uh -huh. for the head. I've threaded mm -hmm. my needle, uh -huh. and what I'm going to do to assemble these guys, oh no wait, I forgot a step. First we have to stuff. Well, yes. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> what duh. am I thinking? <laughs> yeah. So first we stuff. Okay. And you want to stuff. And then once you got it stuffed, once you have we'll it all stuffed. We'll pretend you're stuffed. How's that? We'll pretend. Good uh -huh. point. And then you put them together. And do you match up these two tails? Yep, you match up the okay. tails. And this is, generally, I make them so that they're at the back of the work. Okay. And so now you'll see I'm using the tail of the head. So it's to important do the to leave a long tail on 
either sure. end? On okay. either end. Okay. It's up to your preference. I usually okay. do it on the head so then I know it's done and if I forgot to, I can make up for it when sure. I'm doing the body. Sure. You can, nice thing about making dolls is you don't have to worry about weaving in your ends. Oh. As long as you secure the end tightly, you just hide it on the inside. Oh, that's nice. That's a pleasure. Yeah, and then you uh -huh. line these up. And you use, and you use a, I use a whip stitch. A whip stitch. Very simple. Okay. And I go stitch. Now, when you get stitch. this all done, Kim, do you yes. pull that tight so you form, make your neck a little smaller? You want to make the neck, it, it depends on, on the type of effect you want. Okay. Um, you can always, I often decrease both at, okay. the, at the bottom of the now, head and the top of the body. Now, once you've done this, now you're going to embellish them, correct? Now you want to do faces. Well, this was great fun, Kim. And we'll be right back. Knitting daily. Make time for yarn every day. Visit our website for free access to all the patterns, project ideas, tips, and techniques from this season of Knitting Daily. Log on and get printer-friendly patterns and more at knittingdailytv.com. This is show 312. Take your knitting to the next level. Visit knittingdailytv.com for your free e-booklet of 13 tips, hints, and secrets to improve your knitting skills from the designers featured on Knitting Daily TV.